David, commentators are saying that her decision to go for broke on woke has been Nicola Sturgeon's downfall. Why do you think she doubled down on the trans issue? Everybody sort of says, isn't it odd, isn't it strange? What on earth does she think she's doing? I've got a very different take on this, Calvin. I think going for broke on woke is absolutely fundamental to Sturgeon and to the particular kind of nationalism that she embraced. See, what is generally the case? I mean, come on, you know, you and I are used to sort of putting things in, in big pictures at various ends of the political spectrum. Where does nationalism normally belong? It belongs very firmly at the right of the political spectrum. Mm -hmm. But Scottish nationalism has decided to play a different game. It talks about civic nationalism. It's determined to distinguish itself from anything beastly and old fashioned and sweaty, rather like English nationalism. <laughs> so what you do is you embrace the left. And the further the left goes, the more you've actually got to embrace it. And this, of course, is in one sense really quite clever. You, as it were, you take from nationalism a taint which with today's politics is seen as dangerous, you know, shoving it out on the far right as the kind of thing that we, well, most people disapprove of. But on the other hand, it means because the left boundary goes further and further and further and further, you have to go further and further and further. Do you see what I mean? Yes. And so we've, what we've done, we've seen uh, woke as mere and, and the, the, of course, the preposterous embrace of, of transsexualism or what I would like to call it, transsexualism. We've, we've seen this as something accidental. It's not, it's fundamental, it's central to the enterprise. It's going to be very interesting to see, actually, not, I mean, Sturgeon's got out of it by simply disappearing. Clearly, what happened, Calvin, she found the contradictions absolutely impossible. Mm -hmm. The question is whether the movement can escape from the position that it finds itself in, because it's not just her. I mean, uh, um, Salmon was playing exactly the same game. So they've used it as a differentiating factor, which makes sense, but her popularity has been on the decline for years now. Do you think that's linked to that? And also, do you think she jumped before she was pushed? I think that the, I mean, the decline in one sense is, is simply you know, the, the standard remark, isn't it? All political careers end in failure, even that of goddesses like Nicola Sturgeon. Oh. Uh, but, uh, she's been around a very long time. Um, she, of course, embraced not simply woke on the one hand, but we will get a referendum now, and she failed to do that. And, and the great problem has been, of course, that the pursuit of this will-o'-the-wisp of, on the one hand, a civic nationalism, and the other will-o'-the-wisp, of an immediate referendum on independence has meant the other side is you neglect the boring, dreary business of government. And I think there's another reason why, because of course, this attempt at squeezing the very diverse phenomenon of Scottish nationalism into this strange corner of woke nationalism means that you can't actually agree on anything. If you if you look now at the, her range of successors, you know, from a radical feminist like Cherry to a fundamentalist Christian, you can, you you have the sense of a fundamentally incoherent movement. Mm. And that is the point, isn't it? I wouldn't go as far as you as calling her a goddess. I'd probably refute that. However, she ha has been the longest-serving first minister. Well, another word would be witch. Right. Yeah. Well, stay, steady on, David. I don't think I agree on either term. However, she is the longest serving First Minister and she is an election winner, but she's been very poor on domestic issues. What do you think her legacy will be? Uh, well, I think the legacy is failure. And I think my guess is, clearly, historian profit is a terribly dangerous role. But what she's done has left the movement in a fundamental and serious uh, dislocated form. The future for it is not at all clear. And I think there's something else. It's not simply that by pretending Scottish nationalism is peculiarly left wing. What you have to do to do that, you actually have to trash the entire history of Scotland. Scottish nationalism, on the one hand, like most nationalism, pretends to be the fulfilment the natural destiny of the history of Scotland. But the only way it can do that is by denying the most seriously and extraordinarily successful period of Scottish history, which is 
union with England. If you compare medieval and early modern Scotland, extraordinarily poor, and more than poor, impoverished, violent, and marginal society in Europe, transforming itself extraordinarily in a very, very few years from Union uh, in the early 18th century into one of the centers of European enlightenment, of industry, of trade, all of it, of course, through the unmentionable, the participation in the British Empire. So by pretending that Scottish nationalism, Scottish identity is naturally to the left, you, of course, ignore the central, the, the, the central fabric of your history. You also, of course, because you're again going for the left, you're playing the game of being a victim. The one thing that Scots were never is victims. Scotland was never colonized by England. So you create this brave heart myth, which is the absolute antithesis of the greatness of the glory of Scotland, which was part of union. And even you know, the, the, the most striking thing of all, when you go up to Scotland and you look at these great monuments of industry, the great universities, the scientific achievements, these are the triumphs of what? They're the triumphs of the British Empire. The Scots were the fundamental, arguably the Scots were more important in, as, a, as imperial administrators, as industrialists, as, as engineers, as doctors than the English. The British Empire was at least as much Scottish as English.